There are all sorts of neat ways to join granny squares. In this video, I'll show you my five go-to joins because they're quick and easy and they offer a variety of textures. First up is the single crochet joining method. For this one, you can start either in the chain space or in the back loop of your corner chain like this. And then using the front loops only, make a single crochet for every stitch. You can experiment a little bit with using both loops if you'd like. What happens is the braid will tend to lean off to the side, so that's why I like to use the front loops only, but see if it's something that you like for your project. This one is versatile too, as far as color choices go. It looks good using the same color as your outer rounds of the squares, but it also looks really good with a contrast color. It just depends on the look you're going for. This join is really practical for a variety of projects. Actually, that's the case with four of the five joining methods in this video, but I especially like this one for blankets and pillows. The extra texture you get from this one gives these projects a little more dimension. All right, next up we have the slip stitch join method, and this one is really similar to the last one. It starts in the chain space, then I find that for this one, using both loops of the stitch is actually better. But as far as the yarn color goes, I'm using a contrast color here so you can see what I'm doing. But for the slip stitch join method, I prefer the same color as the outer round of the granny square because otherwise you have this little extra line of texture and it kind of looks a little bit different. Not a bad thing, but that's something to think about when you're planning to use this type of join. It's raised a little bit, but not quite as much as you have with a single crochet join. All right, join number three is the invisible seam. Rather than use a crochet hook for this one, you'll use a yarn needle instead and start in the back loops of the corner chains on each granny square. For this one, you'll use the back loops only again, seaming back and forth rather than a whip stitch. That'll give you the flattest join. The invisible seam is unique in that it gives your squares a fused at the edges kind of look. While it works for classic granny squares like this one, I think it's even better for solid granny squares. I have a free pattern for this bag, which I'll link in the description, but I also have a step-by-step -step guide for crocheting solid granny squares. I'll include that link in the description too. And if you need even more details on this join, well, I have an entire video dedicated to this join for you to check out. I'll have that one linked in the description as well. Join number four is the reverse single crochet, and it's one of my absolute favorites. You just can't beat the beautiful texture that this one creates. So you'll start off in the corner space again, but this time the opposite corner, because the reverse single crochet is worked in the opposite direction than you would normally crochet. It's a little weird to get used to, to be completely honest, but totally worth the effort. For this one, I like to use the back loops only again, or the inner loops here, because that puts the ridge right in the center and the remaining loops create a tidy line on either side. While you can use the same color as the outer rounds of your granny squares for this one, I think this join is a great opportunity to use one of the contrast colors in your project. That way you can really see the texture that this one creates. By the way, if you haven't made a granny square like this one, just a classic granny square, I'll include a link to the step-by-step -step video and the pattern in the description below. The next one on our list is unlike any of the others, and it's the one that's maybe not suitable for every single project. This one is the zigzag braid. Now I like to start this one in the corner space too. Chain three and slip stitch to the space between the clusters. And you'll do that in a zigzag back and forth motion going from one granny square to the other. This join definitely adds a little bit of laciness to your project. I maybe you wouldn't use this one for something like a baby blanket, maybe not an afghan. It's really up to you. You will have little open gaps and that's just something to keep in mind when you're planning your project. At the intersect of four squares, just keep your zigzagging pattern as usual, using the chain two spaces as your in-between cluster stitches, if you will.
Now for the last two squares in your entire joining process, I like to slip stitch to the chain two space of both granny squares. So that way it leaves a cleaner edge to your project. Now, if you want a breakdown of each of these joins and some instructions that go along, I'll link to the article I wrote up along with this video so you can bookmark it for your next granny square project. If you haven't learned how to crochet this iconic granny square yet, I would encourage you to check out this video next. I walk you through the entire process step by step of how I personally like to crochet my granny squares so they turn out nice and tidy. Happy hooking and I'll see you over there.